And Father, we come to you tonight in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus. We ask for your forgiveness, for your mercies, your grace, your continued counsel, correction, and direction as we repent for every sin, transgression, and iniquity, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, worldly attractions, unfulfilled vows, false agreements, touching unclean things. Let us repent for rebellion and stubbornness, for not seeking with all of our hearts, we repent for carnality. Have mercy upon us. Let your grace abound. Wash us with the blood. Purge us with your presence. Fill us that we may be one with you. Let the anointing break every yoke of bondage. Remove the scales of the eyes, the ears, and the heart. Let the heart, mind, and will and the desires of Christ be manifested in us and through us. As we welcome the Holy Spirit to come. Take your rightful place, Holy Spirit. Bring us to another level, another thirst, another hunger, another desire of you, and for your presence. Teach us to be pleasing to our Father, to walk as Jesus walked in this realm. Let the anointing flow through us, that we become servants to the anointing, stewards to the mysteries of God, and ambassadors to the kingdom. Third dimension of warriors. Yes, boldness. Uncaring for the world, but compassion for the souls. Lord, let us be your hands. Let us be your eyes. And let us be your mouth, that we may be about your business in true spirit and in power. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Give somebody a hug and tell them this is your night. Lay your hands on the word. Why don't you repeat after me, Holy Father? I believe this is your word. It is the truth. And as I, I obey it, it will set me free. I thank you for the word that became flesh. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you bring me revelation and impartation, that I may walk deeper in the spirit and continue. In your word, in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 5, will you start at verse 3 with me? Is everybody there? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, this means humble. It doesn't mean that they're lacking, hello, like financially poor. It means humble. They're poor in spirit. They're humble. For theirs is a king. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. In other words, they intercede. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit earth. Those are the gentle. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. And there's an area where you must maintain your thirst and hunger to be filled. And I believe that's one of the areas where the enemy, the power of darkness, do not want you to get to. They want to drain you and keep you from staying thirsty and hungry. Because everybody got it. If the devil can do that, he has succeeded in your life. Does everybody get this? One of the things he wants to do is prevent you from maintaining a thirst and hunger for the Lord. That is called Spiritual stagnation. Are you with me? Spiritual stagnation. Why? That you get stagnant and you don't move forward anymore. You are content in where you're at. Not that we're not to be content in all things, but there's got to be an area where you're constantly moving forward. Is everybody okay? First Peter chapter 4. Spiritual stagnation. First Peter chapter 4. And verse 7.
Is everybody there? Would you read it with me, please? But the end of all, but the end of all things is what? At hand. Therefore be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. Well, if you're not a person that prays, there's no way you're going to be serious and watchful. Hello. That's impossible. Because you first have to sow. So you can't be serious and watchful if you're not a person of prayer. It's impossible. He said, the end of all things is at hand. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it is with the ability which God supplies. In other words, don't go beyond what God has not given you. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when he is glorified when his glory is revealed you may also be glad with exceeding joy if you are reproached for the name of Christ blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you on their part he is blasphemed but on your part he is glorified but let none of you suffer as a murderer a thief an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him and doing good as to a faithful creator. So it says be serious and be watchful. Be serious and be watchful that you don't call your suffering or your trials of God when they're not of God. Are you listening? Many people call their trials, well, this must be the Lord testing me, when the problem is, is they open the door, door to the devil. Are you listening? Many people blame it or try to make the excuse that, well, this must be a trial from the Lord to test me. And I'm not saying God doesn't test you because he does. But then there's an area where people open the door to the powers of darkness where the Bible says make no place to the devil. And the devil has accessed their life, but they're trying to blame it on God. Are you, are you, are you getting this? They're trying to use it in an excuse instead of taking responsibility and coming out of that place and shutting that door. There's nothing wrong with suffering as a Christian according to the will of God, but there's something wrong suffering as a Christian according to the will of the devil. I hear it all the time. And I see it all the time. And when I respond to it in the area, the Holy Spirit always reveals there's an open door somewhere. And I'm not saying it's in everybody's life. But what I'm sharing with you is you've got to be serious and watchful so you don't fall into that place where you don't fall into that spiritual stagnation where you are stagnant and the enemy's got access to you. Where you no longer maintain that thirst and hunger, but you become a form of religiosity. Make no place to the devil. I'm telling you, I hear it all the time. Well, yeah, I'm suffering for the Lord. No, you're not. You're suffering because you opened yourself to the devil. And that excuse has got to stop. Is everybody with me? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 6. 